Okay, uh, today we're gonna do a simple uh, floral belt layout. Um, and we're gonna, when we're done today, we're gonna have a tap off made um, as well. So we're gonna do it with an inch and a half, um, inch and a half straight belt. I'm gonna get myself a couple of lines drawn here, inch and a half wide. And then I'm gonna make some borders to stay inside with my floral. Um, depending on the application, if you're gonna stitch the belt or not, will depend on how much space you leave yourself. In this case, this is just a straight belt, no stitching, so we're gonna make a, a tap off. Um, and we're about an eighth of an inch from the edge, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. Um, from the edge, you see the borders I'm gonna stay within, so when we make that tap off, it works well. And one of the things that I like to have prepared for, for this is, is um, some elements drawn. Uh, you know, on a belt, they take smaller flowers, smaller leaves, smaller everything. So I, I like to have my elements prepped. It really helps me um, sl slide my work under here and see what fits and, and which way I want it turned and things like that. Um, but first, I'm gonna get my flow line going. And one of the mistakes I made when I first started doing these is my, I made my flow line almost too wide. So it, 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 I had a hard time following that flow line when, when I'd stick a flower here and a leaf here. Um, so narrow up your flow line. Um, we want it to be an S curve all the way across. And also when you're, when you're building a tap off that's this short, we want to start um, with the same flower. We want the flower to end exactly the same because we're going to use that flower um, as a start and an end to the pattern. So when, when we got this tap off done, I want to line up that flower with the flower that's already imprinted in the leather and then move across and then that pattern just keeps um, multiplying. So come in here and find a good way to put this flower. I'm actually going to bring this flower to here. I'm going to start there. And again, you see now that I have this implement element drawn the way I want it, um, it really makes it easy to, to see underneath there and I'm not not questioning what it'll look like or anything like that because I can see it underneath this um, copy paper. I'm gonna draw that in there. And you can use whatever flower, whatever elements you like, um, just have it on paper. Um, and this I'm gonna start just a little bit uh, with the stem and I'm gonna kind of go with my flow line here for a second to get an idea of where I'm going to end up. Okay, so now you can see, see I've got the base of this um, flower and its stem coming this way. Um, so I know I'm going to have to fill in some space here and in my flow line when this humps up over here on this, this end of it, I, I know I'm going to want another element there. So. Um, in this case, we'll put a, a leaf. I'm going to, I'm going to hand draw this one because it, it, um, I don't have my element going the right way, but um, it'll be good to show you how I draw my leaves too. And I just make the shape I want and come in here and draw this leaf. And I'm staying within the border. Of, of my belt that I've made. 
And I'm also gonna draw a stem starting coming off of, off of that leaf. And that gives me an idea of where I'm at. Here I'm going to start filling in some, some gaps. Um, I'm using a acanthus leaf as an element here for this spot. Making sure that my none of the lines I'm drawing are gonna gonna actually hit my flow line, but my flow line tells me where I want my eye to go um, in each situation. Um, so there's an element there that worked worked really well, and I can actually fit that element there if I want to. But we'll save that for later. We'll just do a few kickers coming through. They're simple to draw, so I don't really have them as as a element. So there we filled in quite a bit of space. Um, here I might do an undercut, undershot leaf, and I might do a kicker like that coming to there. And once I once I'm there. Um, I've got another pretty good sized gap underneath this leaf that I need to fill and if I have plenty of elements I can pick and choose so they're not all exactly the same but here's a here's a good element that fits there really nice um, and I'll throw that in there and then throw a few kickers in there and I'll get it to that point Okay, and then what I was talking about with, we're going to make this a short tap off, okay? Um, so you can see my flowers like that there. I want it to be the same here so I can use it, utilize it again, okay? Um, and you'll see why later, why that's important. So I want the flower to be going the same exact direction. And this is where my pattern is going to end, is from a flower to a flower, a leaf to a leaf, a scroll to a scroll, however you want to look at it, okay? Um, here, you know, I would normally have a, an element, something like this as well, uh, just a regular scroll in my elements. Um, I, I forgot that and you know I can come in here and see if that fits there and it, it fits fairly well um, if it's sized correctly but a scroll would be nice here so I'm just going to draw one in um, and come around there any kind of scroll or acanthus when you have the opportunity to to use a veiner in places um, I like to use because it just makes the the cuts and stuff or the pattern very bright so anywhere I can add some veiners here some veiners here when it grabs that antique it really makes this pattern pop so that's that's pretty simple way to to get the pattern started um, when you when you get done with this pattern you may like things want to change things and that's okay spend the time here um, before you put it on the tap off we're going to go ahead and, and finish this um, we'll put it on some leather and show you how to make the tap off and then how the tap off works most most of you know but we'll go through that and um, show you how to transfer it okay one thing that uh, came to mind as I was as I was getting this uh, leather cased up uh, that might be a question is is how I get my elements to size I'm kind of a one size kind of drawer so um, I, I draw what elements I want and if they're too big or too small one of the things you can do is go to your copy machine or a local copy station and enlarge them um, make them smaller make them work for the space you're going to put them in and that really helps helps you when you get to this point um, just a just a tip there that I've, I've done before um, and so now we're going to go ahead and get the tap off started 
Um, and basically, I've cased up that strip of leather that's an inch and a half, and I'm going to come in here. You can use a stylist or a pencil, and we're just going to transfer what we've drawn on this sheet of paper onto the leather. Um, and then we're going to swivel knife cut it. It'll take me just a minute here to get this transferred. That's transferred, as you can see there. Um, if I can get the shadow out of the way, um, that's transferred onto the leather now. So now I'm just going to swivel knife cut it. I like them fairly deep, um, so that when you tap this off, it really shows good on your on your belt. So I may cut a little bit deeper than I normally would um, if I'm getting ready to tool a belt, pushing a little bit harder. Again, I want to try to keep my flower right on them lines um, so that from end to end it's the same. And that's my tap off. Um, normal situations, I'd let this completely dry and, um, and then I'd take some, any kind of polish, saddle polish, uh, whatever you want to use that's a good finish and get it down in them cuts and that'll help keep them cuts open for longer periods of time. I'm not going to say that down the road you won't have to make another tap off with a lot of use, um, but they should last quite a while. Um, so we'll let this completely dry and then we'll put a polish on it um, later on um, but we're just going to keep moving forward on how to transfer this to the belt all right next we're just going to show you how the tap off works I got 
a strip of leather here that I'm really not going to use, but it's just for an example. I'm going to take this, turn it upside down, and start tapping it off. that transferred the pattern on there really nice and the way we've done this now is just what I was talking about earlier why it's important to have that that the same direction is I can now flip this over if you can see and match it up to the flower impression on the belt and keep my pattern going now, I don't necessarily hit it right there again but I know where it's at so the rest of the pattern falls in line. And as you can see that went together really nice. And then I just repeat that till the end of the belt. And that my friends is how to make a tap off and how a tap off works. Um, Hope you enjoyed this lesson of shop talk and um, more to come. We'll do some, some neat stuff in the future as well, so stay tuned.